Auntie Tolo, it's Maya Grace in case you don't know. And when is it worth it to sew versus make an outfit in Lolita or let alone a single garment? This question is weirdly controversial. So a full outfit set is going to be like close to a thousand dollars if you're getting the OP, the blouse, the tights, the shoes, all that good stuff direct from the brand. And some accessories are really up there in price as well. But you always have Taobao and Japanese Mercari and the secondhand market and all of those good things to kind of help bring those prices down. And a secondhand cord starts to get a lot more affordable, especially for Sweet Lolita. There's some people who have a whole $50 cord and it's pretty easy and accessible to find all the pieces. But what about sewing? That's expensive too. Materials, or I should say quality materials, can get really pricey. And your time is also worth something. I have been told that sewing for Lolita is a bad idea, and the people who hold on to that opinion hold it very strongly. And the arguments that I see against it are usually either technical, that the skills are very difficult to learn and a lot more advanced than just regular sewing, so you shouldn't learn to sew to sew Lolita because it's gonna be challenging, and that the materials are impossible to source, which is sometimes true. Sourcing materials that all match as perfectly as they do on especially a sweet Lolita dress that has the perfect border print and then the lace that matches perfectly and has the cute little details, that can get pretty difficult. But let's talk about this shirt that I got secondhand from Japanese Mercari really quick. I was told not to ever sew my own blouse because it would not be worth it because there are so many available for almost nothing secondhand. So I bought this one for $20, which is pretty cheap. I couldn't even get materials for that much. But after you account for shipping and the shopping service and all of the random fees associated with buying it, the cost is actually closer to $50. And I definitely could make a blouse for less than that. If you are using a shipping service, you should try to order like a large batch of things or get your comm together and put together an order as, as a group. But um, just buying like one or two shirts is never gonna be a good idea. Also, so this shirt is really loud, like the fabric is a sensory nightmare. And I did not know that because I bought it online. Whereas if I had made it, I would have been able to pick my fabric and it wouldn't have been as much of an issue. So it is a very gray area of when do you make something versus when do you buy it? And I think that the best way is to actually make a pros and cons list. And that pros and cons list is going to vary wildly from person to person, depending on their skill level, what they're willing to sacrifice and what they aren't willing to sacrifice. Also the actual garment that they're sewing because some things it is worth it to buy versus make. For example, I needed a petticoat. I lost all of mine in the move and I really can't wear my Lolita as Lolita without a petticoat. And these are my normal clothes. I wear them every day, but I kind of was really missing the silhouette and I was missing calm events and I really couldn't go to one without a petticoat. So it was sort of pressing that I get one as soon as possible. My original plan was to make a really cool cage skirt that would be a little bit transformable. So it would be both a bell shape and an A-line shape. And I would have like removable lace options for the bottom of it. And I could wear it itself, like with some cool goth looks. But just for the materials, it would have been minimum $60 and it would have taken me at least three months to get done with my current like work and sewing schedule. So it would have been expensive and I would have had to miss out on more calm events while I was waiting to actually get it done. But the God tier quality transformable petticoat by Tula Tula Lolita is only $40 and it takes three weeks for it to ship to your house. Except in my case, it actually took closer to two months. Still a month less than I would have had to wait for me to sew it myself. Using the same logic of making a pros and cons list, I talk myself out of almost every single plain colored garment that I see because I can source a broadcloth or a sateen or a velveteen in a color similar or even one that I like better and find cute lace to go with it. So basically I've only ever bought plain colored clothing in the case that they were being sold by someone in my comm and it was too good of a deal to pass up. Like I did with this skirt here, which is actually kind of an unusual color for me, but I'm happy I have it because it pulls me out of my like styling comfort zone. So I do talk myself out of a lot of purchases this way. Every so often I do splurge still and I buy myself something and I treat myself and it really does feel like a treat because I didn't have to put a ton of work into getting the thing. I just had to buy it. Mostly this happens whenever I see a friend selling something. 90% of my Lolita wardrobe is purchased from a friend and or it's from when I worked at subculture. But how do you decide if your time or your money is a better investment? 
And why is there so much conflicting advice on this? For example, I've been told by some real Lolitas who've been in the fashion for more than 10 years, you should really only sew main pieces because nothing else is actually worth your time. But highly reputable and highly respected sewing blogs run by Lolitas will say that you should practice your skills on things like wrist cuffs and blouses and skirts first so that you get used to the techniques that are used in Lolita specifically. These ideas do not mesh with each other. And I think that if your goal is to sew for Lolita, you should listen to Lolitas who sew. And not just me, there's tons of other opinions out there too. And you should be taking in as many of them as possible so that you can form your own. But if anyone tells you that you should only sew main pieces because nothing else is worth your time, or that wanting to sew your garments is somehow bad for the community as a whole because it sets a bad example to newer Lolitas, you have my full permission to smile and nod and take that advice and throw it right out the window. At the end of the day, the only one who can decide if it's worth it to purchase something or sew something is you. We're talking about your money, we're talking about the clothes that you're gonna wear, and we're talking about skills that you want to develop. And at the end of the day, all of these things are supposed to make you happy. But also, if you somehow feel like you're less impressive or less environmentally friendly because you're buying something new, especially from Taobao, I would like to give you permission to not feel bad about that because there are so many things that are happening that are so much worse for the environment. You are never gonna catch up with H&M no matter how hard you try. <laughs> so sometimes it is 100% okay to just treat yourself to a nice little Taobao haul and call it a day. If you're doing it every other month and throwing half the items out, then maybe you should stop and question like the ethics of what you're doing. But if you're treating yourself after a really hard year, have at it, don't feel bad. Also think about it this way. If you buy a garment that you were planning on making and then you wind up making a garment after you buy it, you've made it easier for yourself to sew the garment because you have one that you can pattern off of and look at the seams and the construction details. But also if you have two things in your wardrobe performing the same function, a, maybe you'll wear both of them, but also if you're not wearing both of them, you have one that you can give to a friend now or sell secondhand because the secondhand market is pretty nice in Lolita. In fact, a lot of reputable Lolita sewing sources do say that you should buy a main piece before you attempt to sew a main piece just because it makes your life so much easier. So that impulse purchase might still be a net positive. I'm still planning on making the cage skirt of my dreams, but having this one makes my life a ton easier. Don't know why I have this out here because I'm, I'm not actually like using it to do anything. It's just, vibin'. But the nice thing about having this skirt now is that I can take my sweet time and I don't have to feel rushed to finish the cage skirt that I wanted to make because I'm not missing out on anything and I because I'm not going to be missing out on any events. So it's going to be a much better garment because I have this one already performing the function and doing what it needs to do for me. And if I ever outgrow this one, I can just give it to a friend and it won't be that big of a deal. Oh no, more Lolitas with nice wardrobes? Whatever shall I do? I hope that I gave you food for thought and helped you think through what's gonna work best for you and your wardrobe. Because while I do directly profit off of you wanting to sew things, I also want you to be happy with the choices you're making with your time and resources. And sometimes it's better to just buy the dang thing. Also, sometimes you do wanna make the dang thing because you're a control freak. It's me, I'm the control freak. At the end of the day, you are the final authority on what goes on your body. And the things that go on your body are supposed to make you happy and serve the function of your life. That is good and proper. <laughs> I feel like the way I was traumatized by elder Lolitas is really showing in this video. <laughs> But if you want to support my alt fashion PDF patterns, you can buy me a Kofi. The link is in the description box below. That is where you can download all of my free PDF sewing patterns and also where you can throw money at me to make me make more. Just pelt me with those quarters. It's what I want. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching all the way to the end. You guys are the best and I will see you in the next one. Bye friends. Mwah. Okay, but like, I'm gonna show you the difference of this outfit with and without the Tula Tula petticoat because it's kind of, it's kind of nice. It's not like massively poofy, but it's poofy enough, you know? I'm gonna put that microphone there. So it only has two little rings in it. I would personally prefer three, but that's just me. 
Um, and the bottom ring right now is as big as it goes. So it's definitely more of a casual petticoat. Ah, look at that. You can actually see the print of my skirt now. Who'd have thought? The idea of telling someone to just do something with their high... <laughs> you should really get prettier mugs. This is the point where the, the lecture guy would be like, Does anybody know any jokes? But this is a YouTube video, so that doesn't matter. I'm just gonna edit out the awkward silence.